This is Kelly Hill, executive editor of RCR Wireless News. I'm here on the show floor at Mobile World Congress Las Vegas 2023 with Danny Tseng, director of technical marketing for Qualcomm. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good, good. So let's start off with a little bit of discussion about 5G advanced mm -hmm. because we're already well into the 5G era, you know, and we need to look to what's ahead. So what are some of the things that Qualcomm is working on in terms of initiatives and efforts around 5G advanced? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we're very excited about 5G Advance. It's the second wave of 5G innovations that's coming to the second half of this, this decade. Um, it has a lot of great new features coming for both mobile broadband as well as looking into different new verticals that 5G is going to address. So quite a few features uh, such as wireless AI, network energy savings, um, XR. So they're all very exciting for us. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about how 5G Advanced will build on 5G in terms of what we already have? You know, what are the new features? What will be built upon? Sure, so it, it built on the foundation of release 15. So when we talk about 5G Advanced, it's really from release 18, 19, and beyond. So it will have all the great features that has been already established by release 15, 16, and 17. It will take mobile broadband to the next level, bringing better reliability, uh, bring uh, lower latency and mobility, but also looking into how we can deliver new uh, features into the new vertical. So things like XR, um, how do we support very low latency services for a large amount of devices. Um, looking at the foundational aspects of the network uh, from end to end, looking at um, wireless AI, how does AI benefit uh, the wireless performance of this entire system. Okay, can you talk a little bit about how 5G SA 5G standalone um, leads into or sort of maybe as a precursor to 5G advanced? Sure. I would say 5G standalone is a prerequisite of 5G uh, advanced. So it's, we're really defining release 15. Uh, we're still to see, waiting to see broad adoption of 5G standalone. Uh, it brings many new benefits. Uh, if I boil it down to three broad um, areas, so one is low latency services, so XR, cloud gaming, you absolutely need 5G standalone. Uh, if you look at IoT, so uh, the release 17 red cap, or what we call um, reduced capability devices that will support uh, trackers, um, smart watches, uh, industrial sensors, they will require 5G standalone, and of course, uh, 5G private networks. Okay, so, and I think we're starting to see some momentum. I mean, at the show this week, we had T-Mobile announce their first network slicing solution, and they expect it to be available by the end of the year. So that's interesting, using making use of their 5G SA network. Um, so I think one of the things that this industry is always doing is looking ahead, and uh, there are already conversations going on around 6G. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about how you see the foundation being laid now as we look sure. forward to 6G. Yeah, so if we look at 5G Advanced, we kind of see this as the start of the 6G evolution, right? So a lot of the studies that get it going into release 18, 19, and even release 20 will be part of 6G. So things like um, the evolution of duplex, so going towards full duplex uh, will be uh, absolutely part of 6G. When we look at new spectrum bands, so the upper mid band from seven to 15, 16 gigahertz. So those are likely to, to be 6G coverage bands when we reach 2030 and beyond. And then one of the other hot topics at the show this week is artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, AI and how it relates to automation within the telecom world. You know, what does Qualcomm have to say about, you know, your perspective on AI, yep. uh, maybe an AI and how it relates to 6G? Sure, yeah, so I think AI is kind of uh, a ubiquitous topic these days. So we're working very hard on on-device AI, um, looking at AIs both on the devices, but also in the networks and also in the cloud. Um, so in the context of, of uh, communication, um, you know, wireless AI is part of release 18 study items, and it really looks at how AI can bring better operating efficiencies in the network. Uh, even looking at the air interface itself, how do we improve the way the device and network communicates to each other with AI? So reducing overheads, so things like um, you know, uh, channel state feedback, how do we reduce the amount of feedback that needs to be sent from the device to the network? Um, looking at positioning, how does AI improve the accuracy of, of your positioning services, and looking at beamforming, so how do we do predict, predictive beamforming so that you can actually uh, have better mobility and better user experience. 
Okay. Well, exciting things ahead. And uh, Qualcomm will, as always, be right in the middle of it. Great. All right. Thanks so much, Danny. Appreciate the time here on the show floor. Thank you.